Hello and welcome back to CAD Designs. This is my third drawing in my 2D AutoCAD mechanical series and it's titled the shift lever. This drawing here is going to consist of a slot, a couple circles, and some tangent curves that connect it all together. Our reference lines today are going to be five lines getting us from the bottom left hand side of our drawing up over to the right and then back up to the top middle. It has nine circles for our main features. The eight circles uh, in blue are at the endpoints of our reference lines and that cyan circle there in the middle is something that we're going to discuss a little bit later. That circle there does use reference lines but also a little bit of math that I'm going to talk about in the drawing. Our modifying features for today are the vertical lines that complete our slot, the two larger circles that fill out our part, plus that top area it's going to have a line and two fillets. The dimensions for this drawing are pretty messy. I'll be highlighting a couple of those during the drawing. If you want to download the documents in this series to have and print out before you start the drawing, go to my page on Teachers Pay Teachers at CAD Shop by CAD Designs. All right, let's go ahead and just jump right into CAD. Um, what I've done already is I've already set up my layers, turned off all my drawing aids down here below, and I've also zoomed all. Uh, if you want to see anything about setting up layers, go see my first video on the bracket. All right, well, we're going to jump right into the reference lines. The first reference line is going to start over here on the left-hand side, and it's going to go down, down 1.25. So I'm going to type in Shift 2, 1.25 less than negative 90. To go straight down, you could type in negative 90 or 270 degrees, but I think in terms of 90 degree increments, and so going down is just negative to me. I'm going to go over here to the right, 5.5, so it'll be Shift 2, 5.5 less than 0. And then straight up, another 2.75. So shift 2, 2.75 less than 90. Back to the left, 3.4. So shift 2, 3.4 less than 180. And straight up, 1.25. So shift 2, 1.25 less than 90. That does it for our reference lines. We're going to go ahead and jump into our solid model. Our main features are going to be those nine circles. Uh, four over here for our racetrack, two up top and two off to the right. Uh, we have one more circle. It was that cyan one if you go check those notes. Uh, we'll talk about that one in a little bit, radius of one down here. So the first one is circle center diameter. The way I know it's a diameter is if I look on the inside here, my smaller slot, the width of the slot is 0.76. So if you think about a circle and you go from side to side or the width of a circle, that's the diameter, not the radius. So we're going to do circle center diameter. Start at shift, right mouse key, end point. And that'll give me my diameter option. I'll just type in 0.76. For me to get my second circle for that same slot, I'm going to hit enter to start the circles command again. Shift or mouse key end point. Choose the bottom end point, And enter one last time. For the outer slot, I have a radius of 0.75. So I'll drop down circle, choose center radius. Again, shift right mouse key and point, and I'll choose the radius of 0.75. Same thing, enter, shift right mouse key and point, and enter again. Now, when I personally draw this, I would do my offsets of this reference line just now and trim it out, uh, because I know I'm gonna be modifying this in a little bit to stick on the same path of me doing all of my reference lines, all of my main features, and all my modifying features, I'm going to move on to my other four circles. So the two over here, uh, those are both diameter. Diameter of 0.75 and a diameter of 1.5. So I'll drop down circle, choose center diameter, shift right mouse key endpoint again, diameter of 0.75. Just choose my circle button, shift right mouse key endpoint, and diameter of 1.5. The two up here, I have a full-on circle. That'll be diameter. And then the arc on the outside is a radius. So diameter again. Shift your mouse key on point. Diameter of 0.5. And the last one, change back to radius. Shift your mouse key on point. 0.56. That does it for our eight circles. Uh, again, this cyan one we'll talk about in our notes in just a little bit. 
Next, I'm going to do my offsets here for my slot. I'm just going to zoom in. Um, the distance of a circle from its center point here to any edge on it is the radius of a circle. We drew this circle here with a radius of 0.75. So that value from here to here is 0.75. This circle, though, we drew with the diameter. So we got to do a little bit of math in our head. So if this was a diameter of 0.76, well, the distance from the center to the edge is half of that, or 0.38. So I'm going to offset this line, O, Enter, 0.38, Enter. And I'll offset this reference line to the left and to the right. I personally like to switch them back over to my solid model layer by selecting them and just changing my layer. And then now I can hit escape and offset for the outer portion. So O enter, 0.75 enter. Choose this line left and right. And again, change your two new lines to the SM layer. Now I'm going to trim. Uh, I like TR, enter, enter. I'm just going to green cross hatch my way across. Um, just these little pieces here. Sometimes you might, you might leave, not lose, you might leave a little portion that you need to trim. You can just go ahead and select those and delete. And I forgot two more, two more trims, TR, Enter, Enter. Trim out here and here. And now I have my two slots. All right. Coming up, uh, the next portion I want to draw is the arc that goes all the way between these two curves, or arc in a circle. Uh, it has the radius of 6, if you look at it. Any circle that I draw, or any arc that I draw, I'm going to want to know three things about it. I know that the radius is 6. I know that that circle just touches this arc here, and it just touches that arc there. When circles or lines just touch a curve, meaning that they touch them at one point only, those are tangent. So I know that it's tangent to this curve, tangent to that curve and has a radius of 6. If you drop down circle, you'll notice that we have an option of tan tan radius, where I can just choose two objects I want it to be tangent to, specify the radius, and then that curve will be created. So tan tan radius, click once on this curve, click once on this curve, and then type in 6, enter. It'll bring up a circle that just touches each of those, just perfectly tangently, right at the points that make it successful. I'm going to TR, enter, enter, and trim off my outer portion of that arc. Don't need it anymore. Uh, now we'll move up top. Up top here, I have a fillet with a radius of 0.38. I have another one over here, but this side's a little bit different, so we'll work on this one first. To set the radius of 0.38 for my fillet, I'm going to type in F, enter, R, enter, 0.38, enter. I'm going to select this circle on the outside right and this circle over here. You'll notice, though, when I clicked on it, this curve just disappeared on our left side. Whenever you fill it an object, it also trims. For me to get this curve back to our uh, left-hand side, I want to use the opposite of trim, which is extend. You'll notice that if you have the trim command here, you can drop it down and choose extend. But since I've been using the keyboard shortcut of TR, Enter, Enter, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for Extend, which is EX, Enter, Enter. If I continue to click on this curve, it'll just grow more to the left, and I can bring it all the way over. I'm going to undo that last one and show you a faster way to extend. If I use the Extend command properly, I can EX, Enter one time, and I'll choose this curve as my outer bound. If I hit enter one more time and then go select this arc, it will grow until it hits that boundary. It's much faster, a little bit easier, um, the preferred way to do it. All right, looking over here on the left side of this curve, if you look closely at the drawing, the fillet doesn't go in this area. There's a straight object coming down from the side of this circle before it fillets into this arc. That's just simply a line. Coming from the side of the circle, um, it's called the quadrant, this outer portion. Um, we'll just draw a line, starting at shift from mouse key quadrant, and we'll bring it straight down. Now, don't just randomly click. Uh, you can bring it down very quickly by holding the shift button that temporarily turns on ortho mode. You can also come over here and click on the ortho button, 
but I like to just hold shift and we'll bring it down below this arc. Doesn't matter how far, you could actually have brought it up above or below. When we apply that fillet command, it'll either grow or shrink that object. So F enter, the radius is already set to 0.38 from the last time. So we'll just click on this line and this arc and the bad thing happened again. Now our arc lost its right hand side. So again, using the trim, not the trim command, using the extend command properly, I want to extend this arc over to this circle. So I will EX enter one time, select this curve, enter again, and now select the arc that we want to grow. Paying close attention to the top, I want to trim this circle up just a little bit. I want to get rid of this lower portion. So I'll TR, enter, enter, and I'll just work my way from the left to the right. Don't forget that little segment that was inside of there. All right, now to that cyan portion. If you're looking at the notes, we have this circle right here with the radius of one. Again, as I stated earlier, when we're drawing this arc, we need to know three things about that circle. I know that the circle that's going to be happening about here, let me just draw one for you. The circle is about in here. The three things about that circle is that it has a radius of one. Its center is down from this center, 1.25. And I know that it just touches this curve. So let me just model that for you. If I were to have this circle just touch it, I need it to be tangent here, be down 1.25 from this center, and have a radius of 1. Well, for me to figure that out, I need to know a little bit of math. The little bit of math that I need to know is just about circles. The same exact information that we used over here, knowing that the distance from a center of a circle to any point along that circle is just the radius. What that tells me is that the center of this circle is one away from this circle up here. And so I'm gonna use that information along with the distance of 1.25 down to find the center location for our cyan circle. I'm just gonna offset this magenta line down 1.25. And that means that somewhere along this edge, wherever I am one away from the circle, will be the new location for the center of that cyan circle. If I wanna get one away from a circle, I have a nice command that allows me to increase the circle size or create a concentric circle, one unit larger than it. And that's the same command I just used right here to create my new magenta line, and that is offset. So I'm gonna offset, O enter, by one, this circle outward. And now at this intersection, I happen to be 1.25 below this center, and I happen to be one away from this circle. So right at that intersection is where I want to place the center of a new circle with a radius of one. So shift from mouse key intersection, we haven't used that one yet, but it's fairly straightforward. When I mouse over this intersection, it chooses that point. Type in radius of one, enter. And at that point right there, I have a circle that is just tangent to my previous. 1.25 down with a radius of one. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of both of those construction lines. We don't want those really on our drawing, but we needed them to find the center location of this circle. In class, when my students do this drawing, they try to draw the 4.2 circle first, which is inaccurate because the 4.2 circle touches this curve and that curve. Very similar to how we drew this one, we're gonna draw that 4.2 with tan tan radius and if I didn't have this circle yet I wouldn't be able to draw tangent to it so drop down circle choose tan tan radius choose the bottom edge of this curve choose the top of this new circle we just drew type in a radius of 4.2 hit enter and all we have left is trimming trim off the lower half of this circle outside a couple more clicks and now you've got the shift lever. Z enter, E enter, zoom extents, make everything look pretty. If you're looking for more, come back to my channel, uh, subscribe, hit the like button, let all your friends know. We've got four more drawings in the series. Thank you.